Hi, I'm going to show you how to make this uh, beautiful lampshade with silk ribbon roses on it. So I found this uh, lampshade in a charity shop, it was a pound, and um, I've, there was two of them actually, so I've already butchered one. I've cut the um, lampshade apart quite carefully to give me a nice template um, for cutting, and I'm just going to use this to cut two new pieces of material to form my lampshade. So uh, I've had to cut off the uh, trim and everything, so it's a little bit smaller than it needs to be. So uh, this needs to be laid on the bias of the fabric. So you'll notice if you try and stretch a fabric uh, across the warp or the weft, it doesn't have much give in it. If you try and stretch it uh, diagonally, it has quite a bit of give, and this is known as uh, a bias cut. And we do this so that this material will have a bit of stretch in it and it will sit nice and tightly over our lampshade. So I've established where the bias is. Uh, in both of these pieces of fabric and uh, I'm just now going to very roughly um, cut out a piece of fabric. I'm doing this for very quick, you don't have to be that accurate with it, very um, quick and easy. So I've just used an air erasable pen to uh, draw around my template giving me a little bit of extra room obviously because where I've cut it off the lampshade um, I had to actually lose a bit so we're adding a bit back in. So I'm just going to cut myself two pieces um, of this fabric and I've got some uh, netting here I want to lay across the top just for effect. So I'm going to find the bias on the netting as well and make sure that we've got that running in the right direction. Um, this is just a piece of uh, old net curtain that I've picked up in a charity shop somewhere. Um, so I'm just going to cut that the same size as my uh, piece of fabric and obviously I'm doing this twice because I need two pieces to cover the lampshade. So just making sure the stretch is in the right place um, and then going to cut it out. So I should have four pieces uh, of fabric all together. I've got two pieces uh, of the uh, backing fabric for the actual to form the lampshade and two pieces of the netting. So I just need to uh, very quickly tack the netting onto the fabric so that when I'm stitching it together it all stays very roughly in place. I find it a lot easier to tack than to put pins in because uh, it doesn't take any longer to tack than use pins and taking out a tacking thread is really easy. You just pull one end and everything slides out. So all I've got to do now is place these uh, pieces right sides together and just stitch um, a little five millimeter seam and you can see that that will now uh, sit down over the lampshade. Um, it needs to be pulled a little bit tight but that's good, you don't want it too loose. So all I'm going to do now is just uh, take uh, a regular uh, piece of thread uh, of the right colour and I'm just going to bend over the lampshade uh, cover at the bottom and just stitch around the metal. So all, all that needs to happen is just uh, whip stitch this all the way around the bottom just to attach it nice and securely. If you find that you've got any uh, gapy bits, that's fine. You can just pop, pop a little pleat in. Nobody will, will know. Uh, so here's the, the lampshade uh, all stitched on. I've done a couple of roses already. These are so simple. So I've got my air erasable pen again. We sell these at Crafty Attic. I've just drawn a circle of the size that I want my rose to be. I've got some uh, two millimeter silk ribbon here and I'm just going to make uh, a, a web if you like, a five spoke little web. So it has to be five or seven, you can use seven spokes if you want to but it has to be an odd number and when you've finished just a couple of fastening stitches on the reverse side and then just clip off that two millimeter ribbon. So when you're using uh, silk ribbon you're going to need chenille needles. Uh, this is actually a tapestry needle so a nice big tapestry needle because this uh, nice fat ribbon isn't going to want to go through the fabric. I'm going to tie a knot in one end. I've got about a meter of ribbon here um, so I'm just going to clip the knot off. That's going to form the center of uh, one of our roses here. Um, what we do is just weave over and under over and under these spokes and because there's an odd number uh, you'll always land up in the right place, which is really good. Um, there's not much of a way to get these wrong actually, they're really really simple and quick to do. Let the ribbon twist, let the ribbon do what it wants to do. Silk ribbon flows beautifully so you don't have to worry about it, it will do all the hard work for you. 
Um, I should really have uh, ironed this before I started, but I'm in a bit of a hurry with this one. Um, so just quick and dirty, get on with it. So there, just uh, winding that round, and you can see it's formed into a beautiful rose, really without any effort at all on my part. So when I get to the end, all I'm going to do is uh, pop the ribbon through as far as I can, uh, and then we'll... We'll just use a regular uh, tacking thread just to tack the end down to make sure it doesn't fly off anywhere. So I've just got some regular thread here. I'm just going to tack that down and then clip off the very end. You won't waste any of this 32mm uh, ribbon at all. We sell 32mm uh, ribbon um, on the Crafty Attic website. It's uh, pure silk so that it will flow for you. And then just fastening off a few fastening stitches on the back and then just clip off the little tail of that ribbon. And that's all there is to the roses. They are so simple. It's the easiest part of this, uh, this make. So there are all my roses all together. I'm going to make a little liner now for the inside. Um, so I'm just using the same template. Uh, I'm going to use the same technique again just to draw around roughly with an a, a air erasable pen. These air erasable pens, as the name suggests, the lines will just disappear in a couple of days and you won't see them. So I'm just drawing around quickly to get my template and then just cut that out very roughly. So I've got my two pieces of lining fabric. I'm just going to run a stitch down about uh, five millimetres from each side to form a seam. And there you can see we've got our little liner ready now. So I'm just going to slip that inside the lampshade. Just slip it over there. And now I'm going to stitch it in. So I'm just going to fold the fabric over a tiny bit at the top. And then just use a regular thread just to run a whip stitch all the way along to attach it. You might find, um, as I have, that in places you've got too much uh, fabric. So you can just put a little pleat in um, at the, the top of the curves there. And uh, that, that'll take up any slack. You won't notice it when it's finished. So just stitch all the way around until you meet yourself coming back. So you can see I've put a few pleats into the liner here, but it's okay. I don't believe they hang you for it. So we're just going to do exactly the same uh, at the top. So we're going to put a little fold into the material, uh, bring it up and just do a whip stitch to attach it at the top. So where the uh, frame uh, meets the little bit that goes over the light bulb, you've got a, a, a tricky bits uh, there to overcome, but you, just uh, do the best you can, is, is my advice. It won't look exactly perfect, but nobody is ever going to look at it and say that's not exactly perfect, because obviously you've got to bring the material either side of that, that frame where it comes down. Um, so there's the liner all stitched in. You can see it's, it's not exactly perfect, but you just have to do the best you can around that. So there we are. I've got some fringing. I've had a rummage around in my uh, bit box, and I found this uh, nice long fringing so I'm just going to stick that around the bottom of the lampshade now so I'm using a hot melt glue gun or a cool melt glue gun which is actually hot I don't know what that's all about um, so I'm just sticking it on don't put too much glue on at any one time because it will go off and it will cease to be sticky uh, and also with this type of fringing if you put too much on you run the risk of getting little tassely bits stuck in the glue and it'll all go horribly wrong so just a few inches at a time, just work your way round carefully, attaching your fringe to the bottom of the lampshade. This is really fun, this bit, it's ever so quick to do. There we are, just keep working your way all the way round. Just 
So there we are, the fringing's all on now and uh, it looks really, really pretty. So I've got some more braid. Uh, I've got some cream braid here and hopefully I've got enough to go around the top. I also want to use it around the bottom as well because I don't have matching for the fringe. I'm going to stick this on top of the fringing to give us a nice matching effect for top and bottom and hopefully I won't run out. So same uh, same method, just a couple of inches at a time. Uh, just put the glue and just it will grab instantly, sticks instantly. It's marvellous stuff. Just work your way around. And then uh, we've got uh, our double braid and fringe there, which looks beautiful, I think. Um, and I've just about got enough left to go round the top. So uh, same method again, just a couple of inches at a time and just stick it down carefully. Chop it off when you get to the uh, get to the end and a little tiny blob of glue to stop it unravelling and job done. Okay, so there's our beautifully finished lampshade. This has been quite a quick project actually. It hasn't really taken very long at all and uh, hasn't cost all that much. So there's uh, our lampshade when it's finished. You can see how the light shines through the silk on those roses really beautifully. You can buy the silk ribbon for this project from www.craftyattic.com and you will need one metre per rose of the 32mm silk ribbon. Thanks for watching this video. Bye!